Today I'm going to show you how to paint a bee the easy way. This step-by-step -step bee tutorial is all about having fun with watercolour even if you're a beginner. So grab yourself a coffee and let's go. So I begin by tracing down an outline of the bee from a photograph that I've taken and I took quite a few photographs of this beautiful creature in action as you can see here but she really uh, was quite generous and allowed me to uh, take quite a few photographs and she posed quite nicely for a few of them before she eventually flew away. So right, back to the work in hand. So this is the photograph that I eventually selected and I've traced down a simple outline like this. There's a free trace down drawing and reference photograph available and I'll explain where you can access these a little later on. So I'm just using a few colours and these are the brushes that I'm using today. They're spotter brushes and they have shorter bristles and a really fine point. And all of the materials I'll put in the description box underneath this video. So I begin by mixing a watery mix of the yellow-orange colour along with a little bit of cool pink. And the brown colour that you can see here is sepia with indigo. You want them to be quite weak and watery so add a lot of water to your pigment. I begin by working wet in wet, which simply means I'll be applying the water to the paper like this. So be sure to only apply the water where you want the paint to go. You can see me using the tip of my brush to manipulate the water into the areas where I want the paint to be dropped. You can see how the water glistens on the paper and this is the time when you can drop your paint on like this. You can see me dropping in the yellow mix and just using the tip of my brush to manipulate the paint where I want it to go. This is super easy to do and really shouldn't take you very long. Just using a dab in motion to drop that paint in and once I've applied the yellow tone you can see me adding the sepia mix like this. Just dotting it onto the paper and letting those colours gently merge together. So today I'm using mixed media paper. It's a favourite of mine because it does make the blending process of watercolour super, super easy. So you can see me here just using the tip of my spotter brush to manipulate that paint because the paper is still wet and it makes it much, much easier to blend when working wet and wet like this. You can see me picking up the paint, this time working wet and dry because the area is smaller, working around that little highlight on the eye of the bee like this just leaving a little gap where that highlight is. And you can see how I'm using the tip of the brush just to manipulate that paint into the sort of fluffy, furry areas of the bee. And just wiggling it around until I'm satisfied that it's in the correct place, ready to build our layers on later on. Watercolour is all about blending your layers. So we want each layer to dry before we apply the next. Here I'm mixing deep thalo green with a little bit of sap to create the initial washes on the leaves. Now again, we want this to be watery and I'm just adding a tiny bit of indigo just to make it a darker colour, but uh, you want it to be uh, really, really watery. And once again, I'm working wet and wet, this time using a number six size spotter to apply the paint, the water as I did before, where I want the paint to go and the same on the adjoining leaf here. And eventually, this is the process that we will use for all the other leaves. So you can see how I'm dropping in the green tone like this onto the leaf where I have put the water. So this is just dropped in and I'm using the tip of my brush again just to manipulate that paint where I want it to go. So I highly recommend watching this video all the way through, particularly if you are new to watercolour painting. There's usually a stage where your painting can look a little bit sort of wrong, but it really is just part of the process. So stay tuned right the way through and you'll see how this painting comes together. Now you can see how I'm applying the green paint to the second leaf like this and I'll, like I said I will do the same process to all of the other leaves and I'm just dropping in 
either of the two mixes that I have. I'm not being too fussy with the color at this point. I just want them to have a green tone so that we can build on our base tones later. So I have done exactly the same thing to the other leaves as you can see here and making sure that they are completely dry before I start painting anything else. I don't want to put my hand on any damp paint. So I've mixed three petals of paint on my palette here. One is Rose Madder, the other is a cool pink tone and I've just added a little bit more water to one of them just to water it down and make it slightly lighter in value. And you can see me adding these tones and I'm dipping in between the two looking at my reference photograph as I go. Just dropping in this colour. This is actually wet on dry because the surface area is smaller. It just means that I have a little bit more control over my paint using the tip of my brush rather like a felt tip pen. These spotter brushes are absolutely amazing for almost like a colouring in process as you can see and it gives you full control of your paint. Now I mentioned at the start of this video that we have a free trace down drawing and reference photograph available and I put all the free um, references in our Facebook group. We have a private Facebook group connected to this channel and I'll put links to it in the description box below. So do consider joining us there. We are a fast, lovely growing community where you can have access to the photos and post up your finished paintings and have some feedback. So links in the description underneath this video. So now that these layers are dry, I'm adding a little bit of green that I've mixed already to the yellow mix that I've mixed earlier on to do the B, and I'm applying this wet on dry to the stalk of the plant like this, taking this color all the way through to the bottom. And you can see how I'm using this um, sort of coloring in type technique here. And the same to the top. I really like the composition of this painting and I took quite a few photographs of this bee but I really don't know what plant this is so if you have any idea what this plant that this bee is feeding on um, just drop it in the comments below I'd really like to know. So I've mixed a little bit of green into the yellow as you can see here, the same colour that I've used on the stalk and I'm using this on the leaves at the top. These leaves are younger and therefore a different colour and although I'm not being particularly colour accurate for this painting, um, this is botanical art made easy, I'm just applying it like this because I want the leaves to have a different colour to the older leaves like this so they stand out and pop off the page. So it's just a little bit of um, yellow and a little bit of green mixed together like this. We're looking for a kind of um, olivey green tone. This is a flat synthetic brush because I went slightly outside the pencil line and it makes it super easy to remedy that problem. All I did was use a damp brush and just wiggle it against the error and it lifted off quite easily. Now you can see me adding the green paint to the top of the buds like this. Again, I'm not being too careful at this point. I just want the base layers to be in place so that we can build up our colors a little later on. And I know roughly where I'm going with my colors. So going back to the B, you can see these two colours on the palette here. We have once again sepia with a tiny bit of indigo and slightly more indigo on the right hand side and using a wet on dry technique I'm using the tip of my brush to now go over the colours that I've applied in the beginning using a damp brush to just blend those colours together. Because this is mixed media paper, this blending process that I'm using here is very, very easy and the paper is very forgiving. I'm using a stippling motion to create the illusion of the sort of downy fur that we have on the bee. I'm sure it's not called fur, but we want that sort of fluffy texture to be shown like this. Now it is looking rather messy at the moment, but like I said, it's all part of the process and um, stay tuned and watch this come together. Just using a dab in motion to blend these colours into the paper like this. You can see how I've left the highlight on the eye of the bee here. With watercolour we don't use white paint to create highlights, it 
can look rather dull so we paint around them this is called negative painting and we paint around the lighter shapes to create the shape that it's going to be and just using the residual paint to paint on the antenna of the bee like this and just going back to the paint on my palette so we have yellow orange with a little bit of cool pink and all I'm doing now is going over the color that I've already placed down so it takes the guesswork out of where I'm going to apply these darker values super super easy to do and you can see yet again I'm using the kind of uh, dabbing motion to create a little bit of texture on the bee I'm switching I'm switching between my number two and my number zero size spotters here. And you can see by using the tip of my brush, I'm creating uh, some tiny little hairs on the leg of the bee like this. But all the finer details will be put in a little bit later on when we have more of our layers on the paper. So you can see applying the paint with the tip of my brush and then just pulling out some hairs like this. So making sure that everything's dry and using a number two size spotter, I'm now going over the initial washes that I've applied onto the leaves like this. I'm dipping between the colors that I've mixed and I'll run through them in a second. We have at the very top, we have phthalo green with a bit of sap, sap green with a bit of the yellow color, which is the yellow orange. And, um, the same mixture we have sap with yellow orange on the bottom but the middle one has more yellow tone so i don't want to as i said i don't want to color match exactly but i just want the colors to look different as i'm applying them so using the tip of my brush with a phthalo green mix like this and then go into the yellow tone and blending them together with a brush and like i said because we're using mixed media paper it just makes that blending process really really easy you can see how I'm carefully applying the paint around the veins within the leaf to paint this negative shape as I've spoken of at the beginning, to paint it negatively. So I'm just applying with care around these little veins to negatively paint them in like this. It just takes a steady hand and it really doesn't take very long. And because this is mixed media paper, like I said, it makes that blending process super, super easy. So I'm just continuing the process on the other, uh, the top part of the leaf here, and you can almost see it out of shot, but thankfully I just managed to get the camera into the correct place. And I'll continue the process on all of the other leaves like this. I'm just going to show you once again the process that I've done. So we're going to the top mix, which is Thalo Green with a tiny bit of sap. And you can see how I'm just using the tip of my brush to paint around that central vein and the adjoining vein like this. So just a steady hand to go around the outside and then the yellow tone and blending these two together like this. I'm cleaning my brush, patting it on the kitchen towel and just using the damp brush to merge these colors together. This paper makes the job a complete delight and joy to do. So please just give this a try. I promise you, you will love this paper. It really is very forgiving. So Thalo green mix and the bottom we have sap green with a tiny bit of the yellow orange color. Like I said, botanical art made easy is just a, an easy way of making your colours stand out without being too sort of um, tricky and fussy with them. So we have the phthalo green mixed with sap going on here again, wet on dry, working carefully around the bee like this. And once again, we're going to be blending those colours into the paper. Using the tip of my brush once again, like a felt tip pen. You'll notice here on the top part of the leaf that the paper has become damaged where I moved the paper, but I'm trying to ignore that little error at the top. So we'll just work with what we have. 
I'm using the thalo green mix to go around the area where the bee hits the leaf here because I felt that it was slightly darker and it does help with the sort of um, making it look like it's jumping off the page. Throughout my tutorials I talk an awful lot about uh, spotter brushes because I love the way they make um, paint application really really easy because they have these kind of uh, shorter stubby bristles and a sharp point so you have the best of both worlds. So if you have a favourite kind of go-to brush just let me know in the comments below what your favourite brushes are. I'd really like to know what your, what your favourite um, brushes are and why you like them. So you can see me here once again just blending in that paint into the paper using a damp brush to create this um, lovely kind of soft blur that we have towards the outside edge of the leaf like this. We're going to let everything dry and we can start once again by mixing a little bit of the yellow orange into the existing green tone to make it a little bit different to apply to these younger leaves at the top as we've done before. Now because we have our base colors in place now it makes it takes the guesswork out of everything and it's all about slowly building up your layers or glazes when you apply a watercolor on top of another watercolor it's called glazing and because watercolor paint is transparent it just means that it builds up that color slowly if you were to um, build your colors up too quickly and thickly the paint becomes really muddy and overworked. So you want to make sure that you apply your watercolor paint in thinner, finer layers like this and blend them into each other. And you can always see the underlying color come through underneath like this. So these initial washes are all about taking the guesswork out of your paint application to make it a lot easier for you. So you can see how I've switched to the Thalo green mix uh, alongside these more olivey toned leaves at the top here. And um, it just makes them stand out, like I said. We don't want it to be particularly color accurate, although you can do, but this just makes the, like I said, botanical art made easy and just making it uh, simplifying the process for you. Once again, coloring in, in between those little buds with the tip of my brush, making sure that I leave gaps where needed. Thank you. 
So I'm using the green mix in the middle here to paint in between these little birds. I couldn't really see from the photograph because the focus was being on the the focus was on the bees. So I'm just kind of making up where I think this green tone would be, just to give them a little bit more shape like this. They need a little bit of background, so I'm just kind of guessing where I need to go. Because the stem is now dry, I'm adding the same mix in a slightly thicker consistency to just the, um, the left-hand side only here to give it a little bit of dimension and the same to the stem on the top. So now that everything's dry, once again, I've cleaned down my palette and I have a mix of cool pink and cool pink with Rose Madder at the top. And I've also added a tiny bit of indigo to the bottom part of my palette here. I'm applying this onto the little buds like this and the indigo mix, which is indigo and Rose Madder, um, will be used to add some of the darker tone. Now you can see how I'm just sort of dipping it in between these two pink tones like this to add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of definition and just following from my reference photograph. And you can see how this really makes a difference to these tiny little birds, making them just jump off the page. As I said at the very beginning, don't worry if you don't have these colours. The paints that I'm using today are from Mungio and they were recommended to me by one of my students and I absolutely love them. Now I don't know how good they'll be for sort of light fastness or anything like that but to work with as a paint and if you're sort of practicing they are absolutely wonderful and the colour payoff is second to none. I, like I said I will link them in the description box underneath this video but um, so we have Rose Madder. Now I think if you're using a professional grade road Rose Madder it will be I think probably slightly lighter, but um, just use what you have because there will be somewhere within your, your paint collection, I'm sure that you have something quite similar. So um, building up these colors slowly, just looking at my reference photograph or uh, just dropping in the colors where I feel these contrasting colors are needed. And I'm also applying a little bit of the pink tone onto the stem of the, the bud like this. Once again, just blending in those colours with the tip of my damp brush. Using this kind of method of application it takes away all the hard edges that you can get with watercolour painting. I've cleaned down my palette again and this time I'm adding a few drops of water and the same mix as before, but this time in a slightly thicker consistency. So we have sepia with a little bit of the indigo colour and the same on the bottom with a little bit more indigo. So one has a little bit more of the blue tone than the other and using the tip of my small brush here, I'm now going to start building up the colours on the bee. Because we have a really good template in wash in place, because we have a really good template in place now, we can really start to build up these colours and add some darker values and tonal contrast. And of course, some finer detail. You can see how I'm using the tip of my, I think this is number two, my number zero size spotter, and just um, adding some hairs to the legs. No, the antennae, adding, <laughs> adding some hairs to the antennae. I'm just using the tip of my brush to create some, um, some darker values on the antennae here. And just sharpening up those edges where it hits the, the green of the leaf to make it stand out.
So I'm just using the residual paint on my brush here to paint the area on the leg of the bee like this, leaving a little gap in the middle where we want the sort of highlight to be. We don't want this to be a flat all over solid colour because it will just lose its definition and form. So by leaving this little gap in the middle like this, you're creating the illusion of light hitting that little leg there and just adding some fluffy bits of fur on the outside. So I'm just showing you a kind of close up of what I'm doing using the mixes of the paint on my palette here and I'm just dipping between the two where I feel they're needed, pulling that paint into the existing washes like this and just using a stipple in motion to create the illusion of this fluffy downy uh, fur, is it fur? I don't know, on, on the bee, the texture on the bee, we'll call it texture and just using the tip of my brush to go over the lighter area that I've left on the sort of um, bottom part of the bee like this. You'll notice from the photograph that there is a lighter area here, so I've kept that free. So I'm mixing yellow orange in two puddles here. Um, we have one with a tiny bit of rose madder and one with a little less rose madder. So I'm just dipping that into the second puddle like that. I'm just going to be dipping in between these two colors to add a little bit more dimension onto the yellow areas of the fluffy part of the bee. Just dip in between the two where I feel the darker values are, which will be on the kind of outer left hand side and using the colour on the top, on the right hand side of the palette to the outside edge on the right hand side of the bee like this. And once again, going over the bottom section like this. I've also noticed there's a little bit of this yellow tone showing through the wing. And so I've just applied a tiny bit like this. And here you can see me just doing the same process on the other leg like this, leaving that little gap in the middle where the highlight sits. So I'm using a really watery mix of sepia here on the wing and this needs to be super super watery because we don't want to have too much colour on the wing here. It needs to look uh, transparent so we are creating the illusion of transparency but also adding a little bit of uh, form to the wings like this. Just have a look at your reference photograph and see where you need to apply it or just follow what I'm doing here in the tutorial. But you can see how I'm working around some of the veins like this. 
You'll notice that we have a Patreon site where we have different membership levels if you're interested in leveling up your watercolor painting game. Um, there are different rewards for every tier and I show you each month a full tutorial depending on the tier that you've, that you've chosen, um, depending on your budget. And it's also a really great way for you to support my channel. And once again, I will put details in the description box underneath this video if you'd like to join us there. So you can see now I'm mixing a little bit of water with a sepia and just dipping it in and out to add some contrast and a little bit of detail onto the wings like this. So I'm using the tip of my brush and just paying close attention to the reference photograph as to where I'm applying this mid-tone paint. So I'm working around the little highlight, that really, really delicate highlight that's in the uh, wing of the bee like this. And again, just using this opportunity to paint in a few of the, uh, I think you would call them veins um, that are on the little wings of the bee like this and just blending those colors together. I'm just dipping in and out of the colors that are already on my palette here using the tip of my fine brush to add some detail. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please hit that like button. Um, it really does support me more than you know. It just lets YouTube know that you're enjoying my content. And you may also want to subscribe and hit that bell notification, which lets you know when we release new content every single Tuesday, so you won't miss out on these tutorials. So now you can see me just working around those little highlights and just adding some form to these delicate wings, making sure that they retain their transparency. So you can see me here just blending in the paint with the damp brushes before and you can see how soft those edges are and how beautiful it looks because it, you want it to look really kind of natural and organic with no hard edges and once again I'll say it, mixed media paper makes this application method a breeze. You can see how these wings look transparent and yet still have some definition and some form. So just enhancing one or two of the areas here with the tip of my brush. And you can see me just adding some veins and um, exactly the same way as I did on the other wing. So with a watery mix of sepia and a tiny bit of indigo, I'm just adding a little bit more um, sort of a mid-tone here. We don't want it to be completely flat, as I've said. So it's almost like adding a little bit more dimension where you feel it is needed, where it is needed without losing that transparency of the wing. So we just want to give it a little bit more form. I'm using the tip of my flat synthetic brush here just to lift out some of the highlights and because it's mixed media paper it makes it a breeze. So you can see just by using a damp brush and just wiggling that brush gently onto the paper like this you can lift out some of the highlights. So once again, just dipping in and out of the colors on my palette, not being too fussy which ones I use, but just making sure that there is a difference between the two.
so you can see me just carefully adding a little bit more detail. It's just a case of building up these layers slowly and carefully as you go through, just taking note of where you think the darker values or darker colours are and adding those in as well. So I'm just adding a little bit more detail, dipping in and out of those darker tones that I have on my palette, just to enhance some of the fluffy areas within the bee like this. And just a tiny bit of, um, and this is a really good time to tighten up any edges that might be a little bit untidy by using the tip of your brush to add these darker values. With the residual paint on my brush, I'm now enhancing the little areas between the buds at the top like this, just to give them a little bit more um, so that they jump off the page. I've cleaned up my palette and I have a mix of the pinks as before. So we have Rose Madder at the top and Cool Pink on the bottom, this time to a slightly thicker consistency. The colours are obviously dry on these little buds now, so I can start to build even more colour up to give it more tonal value and tonal contrast. And of course, a little bit more colour. I'm using a little bit of artistic license for this um, tutorial to add a little bit of colour where I think it's needed and it may not necessarily be on the photograph but I just wanted it to jump off the page a little bit more and add some more colour.
I'm adding a little bit of rose madder to the leaf at the top. It had a tiny bit of red on the top element there and I'm just sharpening up some of the pinks within the buds. And it really is now a case of repeating the process, just adding more values where I, darker values where I think they are needed and sharpening up any edges that are perhaps a little bit untidy. So I'm going to stop talking and let you enjoy the rest of this video.